ladies and gents, I'm back. And we are walking on first century ground that has been excavated and found. AKA, we are in Caesarea. And this is King Herod's main palace that he used to live in. So those of you out there that think y'all got a penthouse once again, we got the oceanfront, beachfront views of King Herod's old palace. Right here on my right, your left, is where King Herod would have chariot races and they would have games and gambling and art and statues of naked women and men um, just because that's what he loved. He loved art. And it is freezing here. Like I said, we're in, here in Caesarea, which was named after Caesar. And uh, this was destroyed. This whole city, I say city, it's the biggest palace in the world. This whole palace was destroyed by a huge tsunami. And by the time Herod had passed away, he had killed off multiple, multiple of his sons. And he ended up only having three sons and splitting the land between the three sons. So here we are, once again, like I said, walking on first century before Christ was here um, with King Herod on his original palace. So this is really special right here behind us is where he had all of his art and he had and he had chariot races. But we gotta catch up now because we're behind. We're behind once again. So we continue our walk and our journey in Copernicus and we are walking into the oldest theater that has ever been found in Israel. This was King Herod's theater and architects out there, you architects out there, y'all best pay attention. because this theater has been here for thousands of years. The architect's not like it is today. Today, people build things so they can rebuild things every 25 to 50 years. But back in the day, they built things to last. And boy, did they last. We still got the whole theater intact, tsunami proof. And maybe King Herod's palace was not tsunami proof, but this theater was, and it has some great acoustics in this thing. So once again, all of you architects out there, start building some things that can last. Wow. Quality, 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 quality over quantity, they say. Well, that's what I say quality over quantity. Wow, still all intact. Thousands and thousands of years later. That's a theater. That is a theater. Yeah. 
baby face. It feels so weird not having a beard right now. And it's so cold out here, my lips are kind of frozen, so I don't even know if I'm talking right. <sighs> Gotta get me a hot chocolate. It's a madhouse in here. Oh, there's Luke. Hiya, folks. Okay, so I went in to get a hot chocolate because it is freezing out here. And I came out with an ice cream cone. Nothing like eating some ice cream in some freezing weather. It just doesn't melt. So you can take your time and enjoy it. We're about to continue our journey on the white bus. On to the next stop. Back in this claustrophobic bus. Bought me some Grammy Mean. We're ready to go. We've officially made it to the beach of the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean Sea is right here behind me. And now behind me is King Herod's aqueduct that he made and this has lasted centuries. It goes thousands and thousands of yards all down the coastline. So here we are on the beach. Probably not a beach that you would just hang out on and soak up the sun because it is freezing out here. But it is beautiful. Way, 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 way down there are the Greek islands. And so this actually became one of the biggest ports in the world for travelers to come into Israel. So getting to kick it on the beach right here in the Mediterranean Sea, it's not Malibu, but it's pretty dope. It goes four miles. Ah. How cool is that? Mediterranean Sea. Whew. We got some wind blockage, which is nice. But these structures are just built with detail. They're built to last. The quality of, the quality of the architecture back then was just amazing. Woohoo! Let's see if we can get on top of this bad boy, shall we? I was hoping you wouldn't disappoint. <laughs> um, I think he's gonna make me go up there too. <laughs> and now we gotta go down! <laughs> made it to the top of the aqueduct where people could stand up here and watch guard to see if there was any any battleships coming anybody from across the seas coming but wow here we are top of the aqueducts we made it <laughs> So we have now made it to the top of Mount Carmel and this is a super important spot in the history of the Bible because this is the spot where Elijah tested 900 prophets that were prophets of false gods, 450 of Baal or Baal and 450 of Asherah. Now in the story, Baal and Asherah were husband and wife and 
the, I guess the logo or the um, bell was supposedly a calf or a bull. And Asherah was a woman that was pregnant from the bull. So this whole community on Mount Carmel was filled with bestiality. And Elijah was fighting and fighting the bestiality and came as one to prove that our God is the only God. And he had the prophets grab a bull and Elijah himself had a bull and they put it on the offering. And Elijah said, if your God is real, he will come out of the sky and take the offering in flames. And at the end of the story, they prayed and prayed. The prophets prayed for a day and their God never showed. And uh, at the end of the story, Elijah says, God, come and show these people. Use me to show these people that you are real. And God came down and took the offering with fire and flames and told and, and just showed everybody that he is God. So this is an awesome spot right now. We are surrounded by some of the most fertile land in the entire world. So right here on top of Mount um, Carmel is where Elijah um, slayed the 900 prophets, the 900 false prophets of Baal and Asherah. This is just a great story of faith, just to know that Elijah poured water on the wood, on the rocks, on the stones, on the bull, but yet God came down and swept it up in fire and showed everybody that he is God. He is the only God that ever was and ever will be. So our God is an awesome God. And Baal and Asherah, nothing but a thing. So it goes really deep even for me to think that you know, this world right now, we chase after these things. We chase after these things and we covet these things, whether it's shoes, whether it's a look, whether it's jewelry, whether it's whatever that may be. We have to make sure that we're not putting anything else in our life before God and our faith. Because at the end of the day, the most important things in life are not things at all. And that's one thing I think that's uh, kind of been messed up with our generation is that people chase so much. We chase, we chase. Instead of just breathing in that breath of air and breath of life that God has given us and uh, using each breath to glorify Him with our own talents. And those of you looking may say, I don't have a talent, but you do. You're special, you're one of one, and there's nobody like you that ever was and ever will be. So be you, a thousand percent. And when people want to uh, talk bad and try to prove you wrong just know know that you are who you are there's Nazareth Jerusalem Samaria and just think This is where Christ was born and raised. He lived here for 30 years of his life. And you know his ministry was really only three years long before he was crucified. So right here is where Armageddon shall be. And that's a word that was created through us Christians, Armageddon. Um, I'm not 100% sure on the roots of the word. I believe it's Latin. But um, just think, this is where the end of the world will start. Right here in the homeland of where Jesus Christ was born and raised. It shall start here and it will finish here as well. We are all called to be authentic. We are all called to be who God wants us to be. 
and I have struggled with chasing after these things. But this last year and this past year, I've really been trying to jump into the unknown. That's been my motto is jumping into the unknown and knowing that God has me. I say I'm a believer. I say that I believe in Christ. Um, and that means I have to have faith that the creator of all things will provide for me the things that I need. Not necessarily the things that I want or the things that I think I need. Yet it's something so much deeper. So I challenge each and every one of you guys watching this right now to just take a deep breath of life that has been given to you because without breath, there is no life. And each breath is a huge blessing. So take it in, soak it in. And if you guys have not read the Bible or if you guys have not not looked into who Jesus Christ is, I challenge you to go check it out. DM me, message me. I'll try to do the best I can to answer y'all's questions. But being able to walk right here is just something so special and such a blessing. And I think that it's important that I share with you guys because I am imperfect. And it doesn't matter how good you think you are. No one's perfect. And we all need the blood of the Lamb to cure our sins and take us into heaven. So, man, I hope you guys have enjoyed today because it is beautiful out here. The weather's warmed up a little bit, so it's been very nice. And I'm just glad to be alive and glad to be able to share with you guys. So, like I said, I'm not a pro at any of this. I'm holding my own video camera. And I think it's something that God has put on my heart to tell you guys. So, once again, I am imperfect and I've messed up in every way other than like murder. I'm so imperfect. But God has brought me out of just the pit of hell. And has opened my eyes up to his grace and his love. And love is fully letting go and accepting. It's love is sacrifice. Love is sacrifice. And that's what Jesus Christ did. He died on the cross and sacrificed himself because he listened to his father, our father. We are all children of God. So sacrifice your wants and your needs and he will provide, I promise. Those of you out there are go-getters. Be patient, be patient. Nazareth, Jerusalem, Syria, China, Russia. The bread bowl. We're on top of the highest peak right here. In the middle of Jerusalem and everything else surrounding it. So this is really special to be able to walk right here on the ruins of an old city that protects Jerusalem. Right here in the middle of the bread bowl, AKA Armageddon. It says, all will see God come from the heavens with legions and legions of angels coming out from the heavens. This is the place. This is where the final battle will take place. In Revelations chapter 16, we are in
Armageddon comes from the Latin word Megiddo and Christians turn that into Armageddon this is where the final battle will take place and all will see Christ come from the heavens legions and legions of angels as Christ comes back again and takes us all up to heaven with him with the guy with the God faithful and true so one really cool thing about being in Nazareth is that this cliff is the cliff that all the Nazarites that the Nazarene wanted to throw Jesus off this cliff because he started speaking about God his father and uh, that just shows you even his hometown wasn't rooting for him so those of you who have friends and have a hometown and have a company that may not agree with you, just go for it. Just walk the walk that God has given you to walk. Have faith that it is right. And God just walked right through the crowd and they didn't even know who he was. And God opened up another door for his son to continue to spread the word. Here we go. Oh. Um. We are ending the day off. One more time, just remember. Christ was just a regular person. He was a carpenter, and he's a child of God. He's the son of God. And he chose to do Christ's will. So I challenge each and every one of you guys to take that deep breath of life and trust your gut give it a thousand percent not just a hundred percent because when you do a hundred percent you always have a plan b jump into the unknown and know that god got you he will never fail you but it will not be an easy road definitely is going to be tough accept the challenge and the only thing we can truly control is our attitude and our effort. We are in Nazareth and we are at the highest point in Nazareth. So over here is the city of Nazareth. We got the Valley of Armageddon and we were just literally right across on the other side of the, the hill. So boom, just like that. We're here in Nazareth. And this is where Christ was raised and really spent most of his life. So this is pretty cool to end the day off right here with the sun about to set. The weather is nice now. And I can't wait. I just can't wait to see what God has in store for myself and each and every one of you guys. Remember, just accept who you are. God loves you. We're all imperfectly perfect and that's good enough. So, signing out for the day, Heart Hatter, on the top of the tallest mountain in Nazareth. Where the battle of the end of the world will begin.